Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final nine holes of the 2022 Silver Cup presented by Roland Ridge and Discraft. I'm Brian Earhart, joined here yet again by Nate Perkins. We move into the back nine of the Silver Creek course, and Matt Bell still has a lead over the rest of the field. But what a beautiful course they have to finish on. Yeah, guys, we're moving into the offseason here, and we thank you for tuning into this coverage here on the Disc Golf Guy YouTube channel. And big shout out to our sponsors of this back nine, MVP Disc Sports and Paige Pierce. Hole 10, it is a very unique par three. It's almost a mandatory skip shot late in the flight, Brian. I like that you have to kind of find the ground quickly. And he just, throwing such a steep hyzer downhill is not easy to do. It's much easier to throw flat. But that is, here it is much better for Matt Bell. And Skip. he hit, hits the launch pad. The launch pad. Oh man, that's perfect. That's the ideal shot right there. There's some mulch right at the short pin that you want to skip off of. Adrian hits early. Here's Scott. Ah, uh, redirect off those bushes. He's going to have an up and down for a par, but Adrian still has work to do. Ah, uh, it's not going to come back. Okay, that's not bad. It's a long putt. And Bell is coming into this back nine with a four-stroke lead. The back nine is significantly harder to score on. Fortunate tree kick for Fish. Scotty sticks. Adrian misses from deep. And Matt is still closer to the basket. That was a beautiful shot. That's going to separate him five strokes now on the field. That was the longest I've seen Scott take on a putt in a long time. It's in. Yeah, what a wild year for Matt Bell this has been. You know, it's crazy. The story that I, I've been telling all year, I was in a Starbucks coffee shop in Jonesboro the week before the Dynamic Dis Open and Matt Bell walks in, sees me, sits down with me, and he says, hey, are you gonna, you gonna go to the $25,000 ace throw off? And I said, I don't even know what that is. And he says, I'm gonna hit it. He literally tells me that a week really? prior, goes to the dynamic disc open and hits the $25,000 ace, absolutely ridiculous. And here he is, five strokes on the field here. This is a long par four. A couple trees have come down to make it easier. No, oh, and Matt making the only mistake you cannot is finding the trees across the road oh. he's going to be throwing three now look at these mature trees that have all come down this hole has completely changed i know it's so sad i would say par three now uh, yeah i mean if they're calling you know hole nine a par three this one is 30 feet shorter oh scott same mistake and that Back to your story, Brian. That is some magic yeah, that's from some, Matt, Matt Bell right there. That's some visualization. And he, the thing is, is he, he signed with Thought Space Athletics this year. And his signature synapse was set to release a week after he aced with it. Unbelievable. The stars were aligned for that to happen. You just got to get up and down here for a bogey four. I say bogey. They're still technically counting it as a par four, but mm -hmm. 495, pretty wide open. Adrian hits some hard pack. Circle's edge, long look for fish. Oh, 
Not a fan. Able to laugh at himself just a bit. Umbrellas are out. Rain is starting to fall. This course gets a little frustrating when the rain comes down. There's some really touchy shots you have to have a good grip for. And that's starting to affect Adrian on the putt. That definitely slipped out of his hand. Saves the par. Andrew Fish will take a stroke on him if he taps in. within four strokes of Bill. We are headed up the hill. Hole number 12 is a combined par four here. There's a Mando early right and another Mando late right that forces players to lay up right here for the ideal tee shot. And then they have moved this basket back down this hill closer to the creek. Check out this new green, Brian. One of the nicer greens here at Silver Creek now. Making you get a little bit more aggressive off the tee. You have to hit the gap. Roller from Fish. Yeah, that'll work. That's, think, yeah. that's good. Incredible. He's around that, that dense juniper and out in front of that right Mando. I don't yeah, think it can really get too much better. And I feel like when the rain just starts to fall and the ground is not quite yet saturated, it's not a bad surface for rollers. Yeah, well, how does wet grass typically affect the roller? I mean, I don't quite, I can't quite give it a full answer, but I know for skips, when it's just freshly wet or dewy, skips are very big. Yeah, more skips because less friction. Exactly. Oh, oh, I don't know if he's missed it, but this is not going to be fun. And we, we kind of spoke over Adrian's shot, but what an incredible air shot and an unfortunate situation for Scotty having to lay up. Now he's going to have about a 300 foot hyzer, maybe a little less into the screen blind shot. No what? problem, Almost easy. Skips it in. Not much thought there. Fish from the knee going forehand. Easy money for fish. I'm wondering if, is this new green easier to access because of the little pocket or are these guys just throwing really good shots? Yeah, I think these are just some really good shots. The old placement is up on the hill, and so they would have had just 100 feet in. Now it's it's blind, and it is hard to kind of control the speed, and you can find yourself in the OB Creek. Okay, mistake for Bell. Fish can take another one. Three strokes with all this golf left is nothing. Okay. We're coming up on a couple separator holes as well, so anything can happen coming down this stretch. Matt has to clean up. All right, this next hole is very specific. It is such an enjoyable par three. When you're throwing well, if you are a tiny bit off, especially if you miss left, 
These trees are so dense and thick, it's so hard to get up and down from there. Even if you're within 100 feet of the basket, you have to drift right, flatten, and slide forward. Tough shot. That's too high. Lucky. Great reaction. That's going to be a pretty simple up and down for the most part. Yeah, the angle here is so interesting. You either have to drag an Anheuser that kind of paints the tree line and drags in as it's flattening, or you have to throw a really direct, low, punching hyzer flip. I, I can only say that I have pured this gap maybe once or twice in all the times I've played here. Same here, Brian. This is, it's as weird. you said, it is a very specific par three. Did he get it? Oh, no. That, that's almost perfect. Moves that line just a couple feet to the right and you guys are going to see just how difficult short left really is here on the 13th yeah he's not even in the woods this is tough mm, great reaction i think he's going to be surprised with that one That slipped. Don't see it all too often. Fish is definitely an emotional player, but you can tell just how critical of a shot that was. Well, he knows it's a sprint from this, this point on. And Bell sees that mistake and he just capitalizes on it. That fish is gonna have to make a putt to not lose a stroke. there oh yeah weak side that was clutch keeping him in the game i kind of like how it went silent there for a second little moment building up okay we definitely have a ball game, Brian. We've got another really tough birdie coming up and just three strokes between Matt Bell and Andrew Fish. Okay, this is a tough birdie. Distance driver, super hard. We're passing the FPOT. You have to push it, but you also have to kind of hit this hard pan on angle and push it forward up to circle one. This is a very tough green to access. 455, low ceiling, not an easy two. Oh, he he just needed feet. it to carry a few more feet to, to get the mulch right next to that short pin. Ooh, right side on the hill is not easy. His weight's going to be down. Very interested to see there you go. how creative Matt's going to have to get from up on that hill. Yeah. Oh, love that angle right there with the basket coming into focus. That would have been a dagger. That would have oh. been a pure dagger. And Fish sees it, knows what it means if he makes it. Oh, man. Oh, and a couple of water droplets just sprinkling off the chains. What an angle. Kudos to the cameraman there. I got the chills right now watching this. I mean, that would have just put so much pressure on this shot. Still pressure packed, but okay. he is, yeah, he's going to get the three. A little easier than I expected. Yep. 
Nice pot. Well, every year here at the Silver Cup, the tournament director, Jim Van Lannan, sets up a kind of community connect event where people can come out and get lessons from the pros, even play a practice round with the pros. And this year, Upper Park and MVP, Paige Pierce, and Discraft all were able to provide the community with free bags and discs if they came out to get lessons. And it's a really cool deal. We got to teach a lot of kids. We got to teach a lot of elderly people who had never seen disc golf before. And they got to come out to Silver Creek Park and, and, and learn from people like Matt Bell and Andrew Fish and Patrick Brown, Shasta Chris. Fantastic stuff. And as we climb back up the hill, Players are now faced with a shot they have not had to throw yet at this course. Power uphill driver shot. And we're going to climb all the way back up the hill. Once you get the tee shot off, the second is not terrible. You have a lot of these thick trees to stop your approach. But you do have to get a little flip on that tee shot. And Fish has done that very well. Should be far Perfect. So you'll see as Adrian smacks the drive up the hill. What does he throw like? I'm trying to put my finger on it. I'll have to take a look. It's really compact and smooth. Yeah. And the late reach back. Let us know in the comments, guys, if you believe you might know who Adrian has been modeling his form after. His putt kind of reminds me of Austin Hannum a little bit, the way he opens up. Let me know what you think about his tee shots. Yep. No problem there for Matt Bell. Fish. You can kind of give this a go, and I think he was. He was. Back-to-back -back holes giving it a good run. Not bad. That was way up the hill. No. And he is right about that. He is running out of time and he knew. Wow, that was a huge, huge circle one miss right there. And we are headed into another combined hole here at the Super Silver layout. A very tight, staggered tee shot here. We do see a lot of rollers on this hole for the, for the way that it finishes. This road is out of bounds. And there is a mandatory off on the left that kind of prevents the, the, the huge Annie over the tree line on the left. Forehand is a play, it is just such a, such a, Fine line here, maybe eight feet across at the maximum. Yeah, the, like you said, forehand or lefty backhand hyzer, it's not optimal on this shot. Again, you got to lean on your strengths when you're in these tight situations, but backhand turnover, backhand roller, something that fades out or at least cuts back to the left at some point. Okay, lays it down. Oh, it's still going. <laughs> oh my gosh, eagle territory. Wow. What a drive. Might be the best one I've seen on the hole. Things seem to be unraveling for Andrew Fish. Especially after that drive from Bell. That could be the nail in the coffin at this point. Yeah, 
Wow, fish, nice shot. Great. Uh, maybe now. Wow. What? Shot of the round. I mean, Bell is putting from circle two, but to get up and down from from a knee? Adrian's going to have to take a little bit of a hike off to the right side. That's not fun. Hmm. Little unfocused there from Scotty. It's always tough to miss the airspace. Okay. If you guys are in the Midwest and you're trying to figure out where you want to take the family next summer for a disc golf vacation, this is, this is a place I recommend to people. I mean, it's right on the shores of Lake Michigan. The tournament director has a restaurant and hotel right on the water, and there is an abundance of amazing disc golf in this part of Wisconsin. One of the courses and one of the sponsors of this event is Rollin' Ridge Disc Golf, a premier wooded track just 30 minutes from from this course right here and a beautiful scramble from andrew fish that's going to be a birdie three matt bell will also be looking at a birdie here scotty and adrian with some struggles Still hanging in there, though. Okay. We have this light pull off to the right side that is a Mando. You cannot throw the power hyzer over the road, and it makes this hole so much tougher. You have to attack the canopy going uphill. So low ceiling, but an uphill tee shot, and the basket's perched right in the corner here with the road being OB all around this is not an easy green to access. And Matt has three strokes here. I believe he's just going to be playing this forehand safe. Yeah, Fisher's going to have to go for this. That needs help. Yeah, that's a good uh. That's going to be an up and down for a four, and Matt saying good enough, and he is good enough. Here's a flick for Scotty. That's going to be a long look for Birdie. Let's see this beautiful sidearm again. Wow. Come on back in for him. Oh, he's staying. I think he's on the line. He is gassing. Yeah. The forehand. Oh, yeah. Nearly pin high on a 430 foot hole that starts off slightly uphill. And that likely was Fish's only potential chance at saving the battle here. Matt's gonna lay up, and now they move into the final hole with a four-stroke separation. You know, it's kind of like Eagle's setup. Two hands on the disc like mm -hmm. that, kind of brings it down with the left hand, then, then leaves the left hand behind. We might see a lot more of him in, in years to come. Thousand-rated player right now. Haven't heard from him much this season, but I like what I see. Fish saving the bogey. And Scotty just getting a little sloppy here in the in the rain. 
Hard to stay focused when you're on the lead card and the, and the win has kind of slipped through your fingers. I believe it's my first time seeing him play on coverage though, so. I think it's always it's always better to be on coverage. Even if you play bad, definitely. People get people get to see you. The whole 18. Honestly, one of the premier par fives in the Midwest. It is a it's a true par five with eagle opportunity. An ideal tee shot gets you past this first group of trees and right here on the top of the hill. And then you have an opportunity to go big over this field. Super downhill, headed toward the creek. You've got a parking lot OB on the right. The creek kind of comes up toward that hillside on the left. And then there's some late gaps that you have to contend with here. This hole played perfect when this was a silver series event i remember garrett Gerthy just unleashing one and getting down to the bottom of this hill off the tee really cool combined finishing hole and he's advanced the fairway i think he did <laughs> <laughs> he's just happy to not have to scramble. Fish just gonna try to smash one down the hill here. Just shows you how tough this tee shot is. It's a long way to get to the open. Come on out. There you go. Great drive. Pretty. Yep. It's interesting when combining two holes just ends up being one hole with very solid course design. Like, it seems like it was designed intentionally. Sometimes magic just falls yeah. out of the sky. This is going to be corked if he gets a hold of it. Ah, it's a little too high. It's just powering through that tree, getting great angle on that disc, and Matt is in a great spot. This is such a fun shot to attempt. Looks like he got that one a little too turned over. And as did Scotty, not happy with it after a perfect drive. That will do. Oh my god. He threw a well, he might be alright. This is sit. Scott right. is ready to go home. You can just hear by some of the comments after his shots. Let's go OP. Let's go straight OP. Oh no. And an unfortunate finish. It was just a few holes ago, there was a, there were three strokes, and Andrew had some momentum, and, and might have just heard myself in the background, cheering Bell's final shot on, and and what a big eight-tier victory for him! What a great performance. The course can always bring some frustrating situations, and Matt never seemed to find them. Just solid tee shots. We appreciate you guys tuning into this coverage on the Disc Off Guy YouTube channel. We all kind of wonder what we're going to do with ourselves without regular Disc Off content during these yeah. fall and winter months. This course always impresses me with how it scores. 
You never have somebody shooting a 15 under par here. Never and see it. It seems like it should be a very easy track. Mm -hmm. But here we go. 26 under par total. Matt Bell is going to be your yeah. Silver Cup Yay! champion. <laughs> He's got a lot of friends here in Manitowoc. He's been coming up here for years, hanging out with Chris Hartman and Jeff Ron. And really cool to see him take this A tier down. Move into new company. He's been with DGA for years, and now he's throwing EV7 and Thought Space Athletics. Got a lot of support out there on the road. Presenting your Silver Cup 22 champion, Matt Bell. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Man. There you go. Yeah, you bet on these two. Yep. Awesome. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for making the trip. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could start off by saying I hurt myself pretty bad back in April with a side injury. And I've been playing through it, and it's been a pretty rough journey. And then I uh, went over to Europe, shot over par the entire time I was there. And... Uh, <laughs> And then came, to come back and win the Silver Cup, which is something I've been chasing for six years now, is uh, it's amazing. This is one of my favorite wins. I'll cherish this one for forever. So thank you. Out of the way. Well, there you have it, folks. Matt Bell is your champion. Thank you again for tuning in to the Silver Cup. And make sure to subscribe to the Disc Golf Guy YouTube channel. Me and Nate are signing off. See you later.